Hi everyone, welcome to this bonus video. In the previous one, I have said that I will try the conversational format and if that worked, I will upload another video. So we are watching this video. This means that the conversational format worked great. So this is the previous method that we used. We used QA. This is how we structured basically the input. And now I have added two other notebooks. So let me close this one. So here we have let's scale fine tuning conversation, but with no masking. Here we have two methods. So it's the same thing. So we are using the conversational data. We can add a mask or not add it. So let's start with the, with the first one, no masking. Look, everything will say the same. The only thing that will change is this diagram that explains how we form the data that we will use in training. So here is the, the, an example of a conversation. We have the system message, user assistance, user assistant, and you can keep adding more turns to the conversation. If you want to ex exclude the system message, you can do that. So the first thing you do is you take the first turn. So this is what I have done here. I took the system message, user and assistant, and we will consider this as an example that the model will be trained on. And then the difference between this and QA. So this is QA. The second iteration will be to include the next turn. So here we still have the first turn, but we added the second turn. So you keep increasing the size of the, of the example until you finish using all the turns in the conversation. And in each example, you add the end of text token. And here, look, so here we have system user assistant. And here in the assistant turn, so you can see that here start turn assistant, at the end of that turn, we add the end of text token, but here we remove it. So let me, let me find the first assistant turn. So here is the first assistant turn. You can see that here we have start turn, assistant, here is the message, and here is the end turn. And you can see that we have omitted the end of text because we are going to add it to the last assistant turn. So here you can see that here is the last assistant turn, and we add the end of text token. And this will teach the model that the only thing that varies is the end of text token. It will, it will notice that we add this token whenever we end the assistant turn. And this will steer the model to basically try to complete the sentence and end it before and end it when, when it answers the question and not continue the generation. Before I have, I did not do this. So basically I converted everything to into one giant example. And then the model was trying to mimic this structure. So when I start by giving a question, the model will generate the assistant turn and then it will not generate the end of text when it finishes that turn. It will start generating the user turn, then the assistant turn, and it will never stop. I mean, it will stop at some point, but we don't want the model to mimic the data. We want it to answer the question and then stop. So by doing this, we teach the model that the only thing that varies is the end of text token and you should, you should you should place it when you finish the assistant turn. As I said, this is the only thing that changed and here is how I implemented that. And again, just to show you that this is exactly the same thing, I have here, this is the previous notebook and here is the new one. So you can see that here we have the tokens, there is, this is the format message function and here, when we arrived at the assistant turn, Basically, we concatenate the message and then we add it immediately to the fine tuning data and start over. So here with this approach, we are going to have only QA pairs in the fine tuning data list. But here, notice that everything is the same. When we arrive at the assistant turn, we are going to add that to the fine tuning data, but we are not going to reset the message. We are going to keep adding to the concatenated messages string. And another difference is that here we want to add the system message only if this string is empty because we don't want to add the system message in every turn. We want to add it only once. And another change that I have made, look at here. In the assistant turn, we add the end of text token before tokenizing. But here I don't do that because as I said, I want the end of text token to appear only at the last occurrence of the assistant turn. So this is what I what I did. So I only add the end of sequence or the end of text token 
if I want to tokenize that sequence. So as I, as I said, this is the only difference between this notebook and the other one. So let me close this one. Let me increase the font and let's look at the rest. So here's an example. So if I look at the first example in the fine tuning data list, you can see that here is the system message. Here is the user's turn and the assistant turn. And as you can see, we have the end of text token. So because the first, I know that the first conversation has multiple turns. So the second element in this list will continue on this. Look, here we have this string. It's the same one as this. And here we have the end of turn token like, like here, but we removed the end of text token. So the next turn should be the user's turn. And, in, and here it is. So then the assistant starts replying and at the end, we add the end of text token. And we keep doing the same for the rest of the entries that we have in the data set. So this uh, and the rest stayed the same. And then I, I want to fine tune the model. Here is how the loss looked like. So we have the training loss and validation loss. And here we start to see a sign of overfitting because the gap between the training and validation loss is starting to grow. So, but the, as I said, here in the training loop, I have made sure to save, save the model after the end of each epoch so that if the model overfits, I can easily load the previous checkpoints to get a model that, that trained well, but did not overfit. And then in, in inference, we load a checkpoint and start asking the model. And here I made sure to change the code so that we can have a conversation. Here is an example. So I said, what is your name? The model responded with the name that I gave it. And then it, it said, is there anything I can help you with? So I asked how many planets are in the solar system? The model replied by saying in our solar system. Then I said, yes, the model wanted again ask the same question in our solar system i said yes in our solar system and then it said in our solar system there is mercury venus earth mars jupiter saturn uranus and neptune so you can see that the conversational format is working and the model stops when it when it when it answers the question and then i said thank you and then the model said you are welcome if you need anything else just ask me Again, this, th this notebook doesn't use any mask. Now, what is the difference between no masking and masking? Let me explain. So I will close this one and go to the other notebook. Okay, again, everything is the same, but here is the change that I have made. Here I have just one, one turn because I don't want to complexify this diagram. Here we turn this into a sequence of tokens or into here we have a sequence of text, but later we will convert that into tokens. And then here is what we, what we mean by masking. Before, in the no masking version, the model will see this sequence and it will learn to generate everything. So we will start by this token and the model should, should learn to generate the system token. But we don't want that. We want the model to take the input, which is the system message, the user turn, and then generate this part the 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 model answer the end of turn the end of turn token and the end of text token so the previous method worked because basically the system message is fixed so the model can learn that during training and the the, the user the user turn is also um, fixed because we have these tokens but the only thing that changed is the question so the uh, by using no masking the model should learn to associate a question to an answer but that's a lot of work what we want is to mask this part so this part will be used as an input but the model should not learn to generate the system prompts or the user question the model should only learn to generate the this this part that it is not masked so in the masking notebook we are going to mask the this prefix i will say and only evaluate the model when it starts to generate the rest of the sequence let me show you how we did this so here when we formed the data nothing changed but we we made the change in the data loader section so here when we create the x and y pairs i have added this method apply mask to target because when you are when you want to mask you don't mask the input you mask the target 
because during the loss computation or the loss calculation, we use the categorical cross entropy. So let me go to the model script. Remember, we have this ignore index that we added as a parameter to this class, and we are using it here in when calculating the loss with the help of the cross entropy loss function. When we mask those tokens, basically we are not going to punish the model if it does not generate the system prompt very well. We are going to punish it if it does not generate the assistant's answer very well. So this is the, 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 the ignore index that we are using. And this is what we want to add, or this is what we want to apply to the target. So let me open that image. The apply mask to target will apply the mask to this section of the target. How am I doing this? So you can see that here, we, in the assistant turn, we have this, this string, start turn, assistant, separator. This is what I have here. So start turn, assistant, separator. I am encoding this and converting it into a tensor. Why am I doing this? Because I want to search for this sequence of tokens in the target so that I know which indices I should mask. So here we get the assistant turn tokens. Again, this is a tensor. Here we have the list. Uh, we are getting the length of that sequence of tokens. And then we try to find the last occurrence of the assistant term. Why? Because here, remember, here we only used one turn from the conversation. But if we had two or three, this start turn assistant and separator sequence will be will be repeated three times and we want to take the last one this is why i said that i want to find the last occurrence so last occurrence by default is set to minus one because we don't know where it is but then we are going to use a sliding window approach to find this sequence of tokens so you see that here we use torch.all to compare two tensors if they are equal and here in the target this is the window that we take basically this is a slice from the target and we are comparing those tokens to the tokens that we got after encoding this sequence if we find it then we are going to change last occurrence to this value and here we are not using i because i will give us the start start turn we want to get this so we are going to add the length of this sequence so that we arrive at this point and after the for loop after finding the last occurrence we are going to replace everything from the start up to this point with the padding token because this is the token that i am using as a masking token if you want to use minus 100 or another value feel free to do that but make sure to inform the cross entropy loss function because it needs to know which index to ignore because if you don't do that then uh, nothing will happen here i have used the padding token and when i instantiate the gpt language model i gave uh, i give this token as the ignore index so this is how we apply the mask and here this approach works only if you use right padding what do i mean with with right padding so if you if you add the padding here at the end of the sequence this this approach works only for that case if you decide to add the padding to the start of the sequence then we should revert this and instead of starting at index zero we should start from the end of the sequence and find the last occurrence so here i should add a note that this only works if you use right padding and the rest is the same so here we have batch size and let's look at an example from why i don't know if i have restarted this notebook ah great i didn't restart it so let's take the first i mean the first example and here as you can see so the padding token is 16388 and this is the part that we have masked this is this is equivalent to this part that i have colored in black and the rest is the assistant answer and if we compare this to to the input you can see that the input is not masked because we want to take everything and give that as an input and start predicting these tokens that come after the uh, system and user terms and at the end we we have this is why i said that here i have used the right padding approach awesome so this is actually working 
and then the rest stayed the same so I have created the model here is where I specified that the padding token is used as in the as the ignore index so I loaded the model I started the fine tuning and then this is the loss that I got and here because I only compute the loss in for few for few tokens the loss was uh, bigger and we start to see a lot of overfitting for this model but again you have the previous checkpoints so you can load them and then so here we load one of them and we start again we start chatting with the model again i always start with what is your name because i have mentioned this in the system prompt and i want to to see if the model learned this or not and sure enough it did and then i said how many minutes are in a day and then it said to me that in a day uh, we have 1440 minutes and here it said that in our world there is roughly 1440 minutes in a day so i find this interesting because i don't i don't i didn't mention this exactly like this in the in the in the fine tuning data set so but the model is starting is trying to be a little bit creative because remember we are using the advanced generation method and we can play with these values to control the behavior of the model if you use the generate method then the model will say will will give you the same answer every single time so the model will not try to be innovative and then i said thank you and it said if you have anything just ask me i've also added this part so if you want uh, let me show you why why this one is important so if i run this again so it gave me the answer if you ask a follow-up question and the model doesn't give you something correct if you don't like the answer and do you want to retry if i try to do this we will add some we'll add another entry to the to the conversation but we don't want to do that to do this just uncomment this and this will remove so let me show you how you do this so here is the answer uh, here is the question and here is the answer if i don't like that answer or if i want to see if the model generates something else i i will come here uncomment this and generate and you can see that here we did not add another entry to the conversation but we removed the previous entry and we replaced it with a new one so we can keep repeating until you, you so as and as you can see because we are using different this method we get each time we get something something new from the model great so i'll uncomment this and yeah th that's it so this is what i wanted to show you in this bonus video uh, i was surprised because this this worked uh, i'm very happy with the results the model is, is small uh, so this is just a 42 million parameter model let me double check that value yes as you can see the model has only 42 million parameters the data sets that i have used during pre-training contains 900 million characters which after tokenizing it contains almost 300 million tokens it's a big data set compared to the first one that we have used in the start of this course but still the model is is, uh, is not that big so i have seen during inference when i was testing the model that it doesn't understand a lot of concepts and if i try to ask different questions um, that cover a lot of topics the model doesn't know how to answer that because i think because it is small and it, it doesn't know as i said different topics it doesn't um, know how to answer if uh, if the question is out of this distribution so these are the limitations that i have found but overall this is great and i think the next step is just to increase maybe the size of the model increase the size of the supervised fine-tuning data set to get some an assistant that works well in your particular language i hope that you have enjoyed this series this is the last video um i'm sure that uh, that i will not uh, up the, uh, that i will not upload other ones and i hope that you enjoyed it feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions and i will be very happy to help you achieve what you want to achieve see you next time